This is very unique and quite rare in Egypt. There seems to be shells embedded in here. Good morning from the Tunis village here in the Fayum oasis in Egypt. I'm going to be heading to Medinet Madi, which is an ancient temple rune. I'll tell you more about it when we get there. Yalla.
have just arrived in Medina Mahdi. At least I think I have. There's a sign. But I see... I haven't gone inside yet, so I'm gonna go check. Doesn't look like anything is happening here, though. I went in here and I decided to come back up and film because Salam alaikum. Anyone home? Hello. Okay. I don't know, maybe I'll try to pay for the ticket on the way out. I don't know. No one's there. I uh, loved the drive here. That was beautiful. Very calm on these fun little dirt roads following a channel of water in the farming villages. I enjoy those kinds of rides versus long stretches of desert on like highway. It's more interesting and fun even if a bit messy, going through that little mud pit. I, I, had, I saw traffic pass through there, but I wasn't really watching it until I approached, so I wanted to wait and see how deep it was. <laughs> the tuk-tuk's like, come on, come on. <laughs> this isn't looking very promising so far, but maybe I'm wrong. People, kids. Maybe they know. <laughs> Some English? <laughs> yeah, right. But I'll try to speak Arabic. I really don't know where I am. Strangest sight I've been to yet. No entrance, no people. Oh, there's some runes. This is it. So, Medina Madi translates to City of the Past in Arabic. And it's been called that for quite a long time. But the city, of course, is even older. Ancient Egypt. Medina Madi is actually one of the only remaining Middle Kingdom temples. Not just in Fayyum, but all over Egypt. Because most temples were replaced by succeeding kings. So, yeah, this is very unique and quite rare in Egypt. You can see some color on here still. Interesting. There seems to be shells embedded in here. Shells in here. There's more. It kind of looks like what I found out. This shells out in Wadi Haitan. So the temple was built during the 12th dynasty under the rule of Pharaoh Amenemhet the third and the fourth and dedicated to Sobek, the crocodile god, which of course comes up a lot here in Fayyum as it was the center of worship for Sobek in ancient times. 
It's also dedicated to the cobra goddess of harvest. We're approaching the temple, um, but additions were made to this area to the north and the south of the temple. So this would have been added during the Ptolemaic period. seen so many lions and sphinxes. Just sitting out here in the desert. You do test too much history. It's wild. Wandering around in an ancient site like this, you can just pull up on your motorcycle <laughs> and no one is here. Gives you that feeling of if you had just been here hundreds of years ago when the Tourism and global flights and all that was not really a thing and like you're the first one discovering it, which of course I'm not. sanctuary this part of the building is the oldest from the Middle Kingdom. I can make out the keys of life. There was once a statue here of Rananutat, the cobra goddess of, of harvest. And on either side were statues of Amenemhat the third, and on the other side, Amenemhat the fourth. There seems to be, a, I see a little foot. Thank you. 
very weathered, hard to make out. Those kids that I saw when I first got here, the only people I've seen. I wonder if they just come here and play in the ruins. There's no parent with them. They're Egyptian, obviously. That's wild to think about. Where do you play as a kid? Ancient Egyptian runes. Alright guys, so that is Medinet Mali. What an incredible sight. Absolutely loved exploring completely on my own. Um, it was the ticket guys, so I'm just going back to pay the ticket, which is 120. I'm also finished here. Um, so back to the motorcycle to head to Fayum and retrieve my phone. And we'll see if it's been swiped with the memory or not. We'll, we'll see. I don't know. Good morning from the Fayum Oasis. So it is my last day here. Um, and in fact, I'm heading back now and it's very early in the morning, but on my way out, I am going to see the mummy paintings of Fayum, which is very famous um, and a old forgotten little city. So yes, um, I don't have an escort, which is great. I turned on my phone, by the way, that was stolen, and it works. The SIM card was thrown away, the case was thrown away, but my photos and everything else is there, which is the most important thing to me, to be honest. So, yeah, um, it's about an hour's drive along Lake Karun, Berket Karun, and should be a beautiful drive, albeit a cold one. <laughs> and then, after the museum, I'm gonna head back to Cairo, so... Yeah, let's jump on the bike and I'll see you at the museum. Sabah I have food. I have arrived to Karanis Open Air Museum. 
Have this man showing me around. Yalla, let's go look at the rest of the sites. So I read that this is like a pathway that we're walking down now and there was buildings where people lived so this was like the main road thousands of years ago of this city and on either side people's homes shops of course now all ruins Caranes was an agricultural town established in the 3rd century BCE during the Ptolemaic period. 2,200 years ago, this settlement had a population in the thousands. Now, little remains of this ancient Greco-Roman city, aside from the two ruined temples and half-buried, crumbling walls of houses and buildings scattered across the sands. The southern temple was built in the first century AD on the site of an earlier structure and is the largest of the two temples. It is dedicated to the crocodile god Sobek. Niches in the walls of the vestibule were once used to contain the mummies of the sacred crocodiles, which would have been incorporated into the temple rituals. Many mummified crocodiles have been found buried at Caranes. Zaytun. Oh, a Zaytun. Zaytun. Oh. means olives. Less remains of the North Temple, which was also built in the first century, atop an earlier site. I know 
Roman. Banyu. Banyu, bathroom. Bath. Banu Harimi. Harimi. Is it Harimi? Harimi. Bint. Anna. Uh. Harimi. Uh. <laughs> Bint. Or Banu. Nabi. Banu. 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 Harimi. Harimi. Is it Harimi? Is it Banu Harimi? Is this <laughs> Harimi? Sochne bird. Oh. Sochne bird. Cool. Okay, so this was the cold water, and then this was the hot water for the bath. Cool. I don't know what harimi means, but I'm going to find out later. Hello. <laughs> Shukran. Banyu. All sorts of baths. So yeah, this was like a Ptolemaic era city, as I read. And thousands of people used to live here. Um, during the Greco-Roman occupation, so it has the like, Greek influence, Roman influence, of course, ancient Egyptians were here as well. All right, so we're now walking back from Karanis this ancient ruin of a city going to this little museum where we can see the mummy painting and I'll tell you more about that when we're in this little museum. I've read that it's very small and there's not much to see in there aside from this. But, Ida? Tahona. 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 Ida Tahona. Dora? Am. 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 Ah. 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 This is something for food. Maybe it's like a millet for wheat. I don't know the words he just said, but from the little bit I know about making food in the ancient ways, maybe this is a like a wheat millet. Like aish? Aish. Aish, aish or aish? aish? I always mess up that word. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's to make bread. Aish. Oh, wow. Cool. That's wild. All right, let's go see this painting. The map. <laughs> The mummy paintings of Fayyum are probably what Fayyum is best known for. These mummy masks were realistic portraits painted on boards and attached to the faces of upper-class mummies during the Roman occupation of Egypt almost 2,000 years ago, between the 1st and 3rd centuries AD. During this time, the Egyptians still had a great belief in resurrection after death and the features of the deceased were painted to allow the spirits to recognize the body. The portraits were painted in acoustic powdered pigments mixed with beeswax, others with water-based paints. The portraits greatly influenced Coptic art in Egypt and provide a link between the art of the ancient Egyptians and later portraits during the Middle Ages. Around 700 of these lifelike paintings were uncovered in and around Fayyum, beginning in the late 19th century, but nearly all of them were smuggled, sold, or traded outside the country. The Met in New York City has many of these portraits now. Today, only two of the portraits remain in Fayyum. Both are at the Komoshu Museum here in Karanis. More can be seen in the Cairo Museum. This 
So that was the museum, guys. I am just about to head back now to Kaido. I think the police are going to escort me for a little while. As long as they don't follow all the way to Giza, I'm okay with that. So see you on the bike. <laughs> That concludes Fayum. Just made it back to, to Cairo, to Giza. What an awesome experience overall. Fayum Oasis is beautiful. There's a lot of history there. Definitely encourage you to visit it if you have time while in Egypt or if you're Egyptian, take a trip to Fayum. <laughs> so yeah, happy to be back though. I'm gonna shower, do laundry, all that. But uh, stay tuned for what's coming next. I have other trips coming up in the future. Um, and of course, just things in Cairo and Giza and surrounding areas. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will catch you on the next one.